now going to Chuck Baldwin. I can't think of a more perfect time to have him on because we carry his uh, sometimes multiple uh, weekly columns. Uh, very well researched, uh, great work that uh, he does, and we're obviously going to get into his new book, but I want to get into Super Congress to target the Second Amendment, according to Larry Pratt. Uh, the bills now will originate out of the Super Congress, um, and there's no filibustering or amendments, and then if the Congress doesn't do, doesn't vote yes on their bill, then the, then the Super Congress on spending bills implements it themselves. So it's a dictatorship over the purse between uh, 12 members of the House and Senate and of course, the 13th commander, uh, emperor, the council of 13 chairman, the dear leader, Obama. Uh, but uh, going uh, again to Chuck Baldwin, author, radio talk show host, pastor, columnist. Uh, and of course, um, he uh, has Chuck Baldwin uh, live dot com. And he was the presidential candidate and got a lot of attention, got a lot of good work done uh, for the Constitution Party back during the last uh, presidential round. And he joins us now to break down all the different things that are unfolding and taking place. Uh, the new book is Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission. Pastor, uh, good to have you here with us. Alex, great to be with you again. Thank you very much. Uh, well, so much has happened. So much is going on. But out of the gates, before we get into Romans 13, uh, give us your view and uh, your breakdown of this new super Congress. Yeah. Well, Larry Pratt does yeoman's work in keeping the American people informed on what's going on relative to Second Amendment issues. And I know your audience is a, a pretty intelligent audience because uh, they listen to you every day and the information you share. But uh, anything that Larry Pratt puts out, people need to pay attention to. That's the bottom line. Unlike some of the other uh, uh, organizations that say they're looking out for the Second Amendment, the gun owners of America and Larry Pratt are really doing it. And uh, whenever Larry broke this story, I, I just shook my head and said, you know, this is stuff that we've been talking about for a long time, and now here it is in reality. Uh, Pastor, do me a favor. I can hear you pretty clear, but you're a little muffled. Will you get right into that microphone on your phone? All right. I, how's that? That is absolutely beautiful. Uh, 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 please continue uh, uh, with your breakdown. Yeah, I was just saying that uh, Larry Pratt is, is the one man that really, truly looks out for the Second Amendment issues in America. And, and as you know, you have him on many times. He is, uh, when he first broke that story, uh, I, I just I shook my head and I said, you know, this is the stuff that we've been talking about. This is the stuff that you've been talking about for a long time. And now here it is in fruition, just like the, the debt ceiling debacle. I mean... You predicted it. I predicted it. I, I mean, a lot of people. This is this is a no-brainer. We knew this was going to happen. They, uh, Republicans and Democrats alike, they will not do what is necessary to discipline themselves to the Constitution of the United States. Uh, th this is a debacle of the highest order, and you know, I, I, everything that we've been talking about for the last several years. That I was in two A when I was, you know, running around the country trying to get the message out after Ron Paul. Uh, you know, dropped out of the race. Uh, and now here we are again in 2012, and the things that we were talking about then have now come to fruition. Well, you're right. Uh, it is now coming to fruition. Um, I want to get into Romans 13 and this attitude of rolling over uh, to government. But, I mean, it, it's so arrogant. I mean, so over the top. And, and then it, there's not even a bigger fanfare because it's all technical and lawyery uh, and in fine print, Chuck. But... To say, oh, the, the, the bills will now originate out of a council, and then you can vote it up or down, but if you don't vote for it, then we automatically do this. And, and the, I mean, this is bizarre. Well, this, this is, this, they're setting us up for this uh, continuity of government. I, I've been writing on this for several years. I know you've been talking about it. The, the, the COG has been around since the 1990s when Clinton was president. It was intensified uh, whenever Bush uh, two was in office, uh, and this is just the continuation of it. And then the Council of Governors, uh, we know we wrote about that. Uh, you go to the FEMA website and you see that, the, uh, that America is broken down into 10 regions. They, don't, they no longer even recognize America as being 50 states. It's now 10 regions. Uh, and the Council of Governors, the COG, all this stuff has been going on at least since the 1990s. But now what we're doing is we're, we're seeing that this is now coming to fruition. They're, they're, they're taking the blueprints that they've had in place for nearly 20 years, and they are now beginning to implement it into public policy. And that is what's going on. 
Well, you're absolutely right. And uh, I mean, can you speak to history? Because I know you write a lot about history. Those that don't know it are doomed to repeat it. And, and knowing history is the key to understanding our present uh, situation and the future to chart it. It's, it's, it's like charts of, you know, uh, of ocean waves. You need them or you'll run up on the rocks, but people just ignore it at their extreme uh, foolhardy uh, peril. Uh, but, but, but historically, tyranny doesn't just grow and then stop. Once it gets to this point, it has to go all the way. Number one, because it's greedy and enjoys power. But number two, because they've made a lot of enemies and they've committed a lot of crimes and they've got to get total control in their mind so that they can be secure and not get in trouble for all the crimes they've committed. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's, that's putting it mildly. I, I, the crimes they've committed, uh, we could spend uh, all day talking about that. You know, but I think, you know, when, uh, the reason that Tim and I wrote this book, Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission, is because the, the, the biggest reason that we are in the mess we're in today is because the pastors, Christians, and churches of America have simply refused to be the salt of the earth and to stand up as a resistance to this kind of tyrannical uh, of ideas, philosophies, and now activities that are taking place. They've been brainwashed in the pulpits and in the seminaries of America, this erroneous, fallacious interpretation of Romans 13, that the government, because it's ordained of God, means that it has the right to do whatever it wants to do, and no one is, as a Christian should resist. This is the most foolhardy interpretation of a biblical passage that I could ever think of. The problem is, it is pervasive throughout our seminaries, our Bible colleges, our pulpits. Every denomination is teaching this. I would venture to say that over 90% of the American churches, pastors, seminaries, and colleges are putting forth this interpretation of Romans 13. And for those that don't know, all the World Council of Churches and before that National Council set up, what, 100 years ago by the Rockefellers publicly, all they had to do was go in and give grants and lobby and take control of, what, the 20 or so big denominations. They order them what to preach to the point of, I can play a newscast saying, it is of the Lord to go to FEMA camps, it is of the Lord to take shots, it is of the Lord to do what you're told and, and go to the camp. I mean, that's a quote. I'm sure you've seen that newscast. Where, where they actually admit this, and we got the documents, Pastor Butch Paw did years ago, and then I got more documents here on Genesis, and then people didn't believe the documents, and then later they came out and said, yeah, we've recruited over 100,000 preachers to spy on you and, and to tell you to go to a FEMA camp. I mean, that's right out of Red Dawn. Yeah, well, not only that, but, but we know that FEMA has these, as you already mentioned, these clergy response teams that's going around training pastors that, in the event of a national emergency, quote-unquote, declared by the president, the pastors are going to be utilized by the government, namely FEMA, to encourage their congregants to turn over their firearms to the federal government. And I've, I've had pastors, I've talked to pastors that have attended these seminars. I, I've seen some of the, some of the uh, uh, manuals that they have distributed. I've, I've heard the first-hand testimony from some of these pastors. No, we got, the, well, we got the manuals and even go on the news, but here's the deal. People couldn't believe it when it wasn't public when we first got the documents. Then they even admitted it, and folks said, well, I guess turning my guns in is of the Lord. But think about that. All over the country, for at least eight years, secretly training preachers to, to tell their flock, hand your guns in, go to the camp. That proves they're preparing this pastor. I mean, that is such a huge revelation. Please continue. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you something uh, uh, that I've learned just recently, too, Alex. Uh, you know, it, just a few months ago, last October, my family and I moved up here to uh, Montana. Uh, we are now about 80 miles south of the Canadian border. Uh, I have met some people that are in the subcontracting business uh, that, have, that are doing work right now with the federal government that are building uh, throughout the northern border. It's, it's interesting, not on the southern border, uh, but on the northern border with Canada, they are building uh, something like, uh, I think it's between 35 and 40 of these um, border patrol stations complete with uh, munition supplies, complete with uh, uh, interrogation rooms, complete with uh, uh, shackles and, and rooms for imprisonment. Uh, et, et cetera, et cetera, and they're building them right now as we speak all across the northern border between the United States and Canada. And that's to keep Americans from fleeing the tyranny. Uh, it, it's been, again, roaches go in, they don't get out. Well, yeah, you got 
to ask yourself the question, why are they building these along the northern border and not the southern border? You know, the southern border is wide open. They're coming in you know, like a, you know, through a sieve. And yet here in the northern border, where there's virtually no problem whatsoever with illegal immigration, they're building these kind of facilities throughout the entire perimeter of the northern border. And like I said, like a roach motel, the American people are meant to stay inside this thing. And that's admitted that it's come out there using Homeland Security money for the border for domestic operations and to harass citizens. Pastor, I mean, it is for anybody who's been in denial and thought, oh, Ron Paul, uh, you know, Chuck Baldwin, all these people, uh, Alex Jones, you know, they're alarmist. Oh, really? We just studied history. I mean, even myself, it's happening faster than I thought. And as, as I say every day, it's one thing to intellectually know this and to spiritually know it. It's another thing to actually see it happening and to know it's only going to get crazier. How far do you think that, that uh, this is going to go before this gets turned around? Or will it, biblically, do you believe, not be turned around? I mean, I know you've basically gone out of the middle of nowhere. A lot of people that are... I know I've moved outside town, and we can all feel it. Yeah, I, I can tell you that since we have moved here to Montana, uh, literally scores, and I'm not exaggerating, Alex, scores of families have either already moved here or are in the process of moving here. Uh, I, God is putting it in the hearts of people. I, I really believe that God is calling a remnant uh, to himself, and, and this, this feeling, this inner gut feeling, that, uh, you know, the hammer is ready to fall and we need to be in a position to, uh, to take care of our families and to be around fellow patriots and brothers, uh, you know, who are like-minded uh, is, is burning in the hearts of people all over America. And I, I can tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm meeting them and talking Did you know to them before you even said this, I've had a burning to move to Montana? Is that right? Yeah, Montana or Wyoming, mainly Montana. I just have wanted to get out of here and get onto the top of a hill somewhere and uh, do a daily broadcast, but that's it. Just you know, every that's... instinct I've got is get out of the city. Get out, get out, get out. Is that what you were feeling? Oh, boy, I tell you, we, we were feeling it for two to three years, and, and we researched, and, and my family and I, we researched hard. We prayed. We agonized, and, and we narrowed it down to the mountain states. And then from there to Montana. And yeah, you had the big radio show, you, the, 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 the big church, everything. You just pulled up and left. I'm sorry, go back to what you said you researched. Yeah, we did. We, we, left, we left it all. And, uh, we, yeah, we researched intently and finally determined the Flathead Valley was where, you know, we should be. And that's where we are. But I tell you what, the only regret I have is, is why didn't God send me here 10 years ago? Because uh, this is just marvelous. I, I you know, to, to realize, to be around people that love freedom, to be around people that see what's going on, that know, what, that know what's going on. And, our, you know, we started a new fellowship, we call it Liberty Fellowship, here in Kalispell. And it's comprised of people that know what's going on. When you talk to them, they don't look at you like a, you know, the deer in the headlights stare. They appreciate the principles of freedom and liberty. We preach those principles every Sunday. I mean, the people are like-minded. There's a camaraderie. There's a fellowship, a true fellowship. And these people know what's going on. And, and they are, many of these people are, are, are prepared. They've been prepared. They're helping others to prepare. It's just uh, a, a refreshment that I cannot express. I, I just love it. Well, things are going to have to get really bad before America finally gets up off its knees, but it's starting to happen. Stay there. I want to get into the meat of Romans 13 and then phone calls straight ahead. A little Stay short away. segment the next one. Let's get into the new book. We'll also tell folks where they can get it and get it to their pastor. Uh, these are not churches. These are spy centers. These are areas for men to be taught to be uh, weaklings and to take their Prozac uh, and to do business deals and for people to basically cheat on their husbands and wives. And that's my experience in big mega churches in Dallas. And I grew up around some of the preachers. Believe me, it's not a pretty sight. Uh, but obviously, if the, if, the, if the preachers aren't really preaching what's in the Bible and don't know that 1776 was started by the real preachers who weren't going to be slaves and the black brigades, as they were called, uh, then, I mean, immediately, the, if they're not talking about freedom and standing up against tyranny, uh, and being the light of the world, you know you're in a wicked church. But uh, explain how they use Romans 13 and how they twist it, uh, Pastor Chuck Baldwin. Well, what they do is they teach that Romans 13 uh, would have every Christian to submit to civil government regardless of the kind of uh, edicts that government may put forth. In other words, uh, if 
government is 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 wicked and evil, uh, requiring men to submit to evil and wickedness. As a Christian, that we are to submit to that evil government because Romans 13 teaches us to do so. It, it is a totally passive uh, application, an erroneous application of this you know wonderful passage of scripture that. It actually does just the opposite. That's why Tim and I wrote the book. It's called Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission. And we go into it verse by verse. We go into it in depth. We look back into the history of, of a Christian forebears. We talk about the Christian philosophers and theologians of, of years gone by. We compare what they had to say to what preachers are saying today. We go back into the Old Testament. We look at the scripture from... Uh, from both the Old and New Testament standpoint, and we see the consistent teaching of Scripture is just the opposite of what this current uh, interpretation uh, that is being used uh, is. And as a result, this book, Romans 13, uh, is, is, in my estimation, a blockbuster because there's nothing else like it in print that I know of today, uh, at least not recently. And we are trying to get the word out to Christians, to churches, to pastors, and showing, giving them the scriptural, historical foundation of the true meaning of Romans chapter 13. For folks that don't know, it was one of Hitler's favorite uh, verses to take out of context. And uh, for those that don't know what it says, why don't you state Romans 13 for listeners? Yeah, Romans chapter 13 uh, basically says that uh, the higher powers, that we are to submit to the higher powers uh, in verse 1. But the higher powers mentioned in verse 1 uh, are, are constituted to be uh, the highest power. And the fact of the matter is the higher power, which is the civil power, is not the authority of God. It is not the highest power. All power is subjective, Alex. All power is jurisdictional. Every single person in any position of authority or power has a jurisdiction related to that authority. He has no right to violate or transgress the parameters in the jurisdiction. It's like you have a right to defend yourself, and you have a right to defend yourself in your own home, but you don't have your right to go into somebody else's house when they attack you uh, defend yourself. It's all common sense, uh, jurisdictional, and the system understands this. And also they say, well, do whatever government says. It's your king. Well, in America, we, the people, right, we created That's the government. Right. So so we're going to, uh, I mean, but now our government is a bunch of foreign banks that paid off our politicians. So we've got to submit to Al Gore and George Soros. This new book you've got out, even if someone isn't a Christian out there and they wonder why the churches in America just support any type of illegal war, any type of torture, any type of corruption, any type of forced inoculations, it's because they become like state-run churches like in China or Soviet Russia. And so it's important to educate pastors uh, about what's going on. Now, continuing with, with, with uh, Romans 13 and what it really states and what it's been turned into. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. And, and Romans chapter 13, we talked, we ended the, right before the break, uh, in verse 1, where it says, Let every soul be subject to the higher powers. There's no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God, and so forth. And what they do is they take, they translate those verses into meaning that we are to submit to government no matter how evil, no matter how wicked, no matter how, how unconstitutional, et cetera, et cetera. And what we've done, my, my son is a co constitutional attorney, as you know, and uh, he and I collaborated on this book. We call it Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission. And we, we go into the depth of the Word of God in both Testaments. We look at the scriptures, uh, the myriad scriptures that deal with this. There, there's hundreds and hundreds of scriptures that deal with this subject, not just Romans chapter 13. The, the passage does not stand alone. We know that the scripture is to be interpreted in the light of other scripture. And so we've got, we've delved into the various scriptures. We've delved into history. Well, that, the entire you know, Bible the is the prophets and people being killed for not submitting to corrupt government. Absolutely. And the king says, bow down to, you know, Booblebub or whatever. And he says, no, so get into the lion's den or I'm going to crucify you upside down or I'm going to sell you into slavery. The whole Bible is about resisting tyranny. Absolutely. And I make that statement in, in, in the course of my address. I, I, I preached a four-part series based on the book. And I made that, that very statement, that very observation that if you look at biblical history, you go back to the Old Testament, even into the New, uh, perhaps a majority... Uh, can't say that equivocally, but perhaps a majority of the story 
series of, of the Bible deal with someone resisting civil authority? I think almost, uh, I'd say 80%. I mean, look at John the Baptist getting his head cut off. I mean, Absolutely. can you think of anybody? Uh, I mean, Moses didn't do what Pharaoh said. I mean, the whole thing's a sick joke. It's, yeah, a, it really it's a joke. The entire Bible is about, uh, about resisting tyranny. Exactly right. And, and I, again, that's why I say that this book is so needful. Uh, and as you noted, every tyrant in history has used Romans 13, especially if there's a Christian uh, people involved, to try and subjugate the folks into, into, their, into their wishes. Hitler did it. Uh, we, we know that this is a favorite uh, passage of Scripture from those who would like to, uh, you know, tyrann uh, tyrannize us and to uh, enslave us. You know, this book, Romans 13, uh, Alex, I, I just don't know of anything right now that's out there. That's why we put this together. And I, you know, in my frustration as a pastor for over 35 years in dealing with, with churches and preachers, and Christian people, and, and hearing this over and over and over again, that and the 501c3 uh, incorporation status, those two things have subjugated the church uh, to, to Caesar more than any two things I can think of, and that's why this book is so necessary. Well, let's go over a few of the uh, accounts in the Bible of people uh, being evil and, and, and resisting murderers and tyrants according to the modern preachers. And then let's go through actually through some of the passages, because, I mean, there's just so many. You know, I, I, I can't even remember. You know, who will rise up for me against the wicked one? On and on and on about if you see evil being done and you don't try to resist it, then the blood's on your hands. I mean, let's go through a bunch of those uh, verses, if you've got them there in front of you, Pastor, sure. on the other side. And then we'll jam in some calls as well and continue with calls throughout the end of the broadcast. And the pastor leaves us in T-minus 25 minutes. Growing up. I, uh, you know, like any teenager, saw a lot of racy stuff, did some wild things. And I was always t taken to church when I was young. And I thought, you know, this is all just goody two-shoes. People that obsess over don't do anything bad because it leads to a lot worse stuff. And the older I've gotten, I've realized that's absolutely true. It's, it's societies that are pious and into being focused and clean and good are not because these are wimps, ladies and gentlemen. It's because they don't want their children destroyed. It's because you in fact normally see very pious cultures come out of giant murderous long wars and corruption. And once they get out of it, they go, whoo, how did we ever get into that? Most of their family's dead. Mama, daddy, totally wiped out. Study history and they go, we are getting ourselves in order. Okay, and that's what being straight and strong is all about. And I'm not even saying I'm perfect, but I at least know and I'm ashamed of the, of the bad things I do unintentionally. You know, you catch yourself saying something, doing something, and if, you, and if you do the things I'm talking about, you go, Alex, you're a great guy, that's no big deal. No, it is a big deal because little things turn into big things. And, you know, they sell evil like it's a sexy devil cheerleader, you know, like the bumper sticker. And it's, it's fun and it's cool. Just like Madison Avenue advertises their Hollywood drugs. Illegal drugs are fun. They're just advertising CIA products for you. No, it's not fun turning into a crack whore or, or, or going to prison. You know, I love the old Pinocchio, one of the only good Disney movies out there with a good message. You know, they get them to knock out some windows, drink some beer, smoke some cigars, you know, uh, gamble, whatever. And then they turn into donkeys and get loaded on a ship to be slaves. And it's real simple, but that's how it works. They, they, they get you in peer pressure. They get you in a corrupt culture. Now, see, I'm preaching. I get a preacher on, uh, pastor, presidential candidate, Constitution Party, Chuck Baldwin, and I start preaching and ranting. It's just that now I've studied history. Now I've learned a lot more. And uh, I think if you just tell kids up front, yeah, you'll think it's fun, sex, drugs, uh, things like that up front. Uh, I, I never really got into the drug part, but I saw it with friends. I um, mean, I had friends that were the, looked like John Wayne football players, wealthy families, whole future ahead of them. Next time I saw them two years later, crackheads in South Dallas. I mean, guys that had the, you know, the beauty queen. I mean, guys that had it all. Guys, we'd go out to get pizza, and women were just running up and just zombie crackheads, prison, some of them dead years later. Now I am ranting. Uh, sorry, uh, going back to uh, uh, the, the, the pastor. Pastor, please, shotgun through Romans 13, what it really says versus the other uh, passages and stories in the Bible. Well, yeah, right, Alex. Thanks a lot. And, and uh yeah, you, you mentioned right before the break, let, let's talk about some of the examples in the Bible 
of those who resisted unlawful authority. I, and let's think about Daniel, one of the great uh, stories of the Scripture. Uh, every Sunday school boy and girl hears about Daniel in the lion's den. Well, uh, you know, how did he get to the lion's den? He got there because his civil authority government put him there. Well, why did they put him there? Because he resisted what they told him to do. He said no. In that particular case, they said you can't pray for X amount of days uh, publicly and uh, he, you know, even privately. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm, you know, I'll open my windows. I'm going to pray like I do every day. They threw him in the lion's den. Of course, God protected him and, and saved him from the lion's den. But that's not the point. The point really wasn't that God saved him from the lions. The point was he was willing to go into the lion's den in defiance of his civil authority. The same book, you got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who was commanded to bow down and worship the image of the state. Uh, they said, we can't do that. We'll have no other gods before us, the very first commandment. We're not going to bow to the state. The state is not our god. So they threw him in the burning, fiery furnace. And again, we talk about in, in Sunday school that God delivered them from the burning, fiery furnace. But again, that's not the point. The point is, they went into the burning, fiery furnace. Why did they go in? Because they defied government. They were not willing to submit their conscience to the authority of the state. And this was the old terror of government. We're going to throw you in with starving lions if you don't do what we say. We're going to throw you into a smelting pit if you don't do what we say. I mean, the same garbage today. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, even the, the, the book of Judges. I mean, people read the book of Judges, whether it's Gideon or, or Samson or, or, or Jephthah or whoever it is. Read the entire book of Judges. What do we find? We find the people of God being tyrannized, being uh, subject, subjugated by some oppressive regime, and God raising up a deliverer uh, called a judge. Sometimes they were just a, a, a common person that uh, had no uh, you know, particular position or, or authority, but God put it on their heart to deliver their people from that tyranny that they were under. And so they rose up, God helped them, God gave them strength, and they delivered the people from this oppressive uh, regime, whatever it might happen to be. That's the entire book of Judges. Uh, you, you get to the New Testament, you come to Simon Peter, uh, when the... Uh, the, the civil government over him said, we command you not to speak and preach anymore in his name. And he said, sorry, you know, we must obey God rather than man. And they took the, the cat and nine tails on the back for that, uh, went to prison for that. But they said no, they defied civil authority. The entire Bible. Same thing with Paul, cover cover, uh, fast forward, Paul. Uh, you know, past you know, 70 years later. A uh, hundred years later, being burned at the stake in the arena, being thrown to lions because they wouldn't. Well, it's the entire Bible. And, and that shows you just how deceived or openly wicked most of these little devils are up there on the pulpits. I mean, these are little demons. Well, a lot of them have, have been, uh, they have been deceived. They, they, they've been taught it in, in seminary or Bible college. Uh, it's the accepted uh, doctrine to teach. They haven't thought it through. Yes, yeah, some of them. Some of them are demons. They are, but some of them are just deceived. They just don't know any better. That's what they were taught, and they haven't studied it through for themselves. And that's why Tim and I wrote the book. Tim again is my constitutional attorney son, and we collaborated on this book. By the way, can I get my website so people can get a oh, hold of it? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I was about to get to that. Go yeah, ahead. it's it's uh, you can't get it in bookstores. It's uh, chuckbaldwinlive.com. That's chuckbaldwinlive, all one word, l i v e dot com, and it's very easy. You can see the links and you can click on it, order online, etc. But uh, that's why we wrote this book is because of this indoctrination that's going on out there. And that, in conjunction with the 501c3 uh, corporation status of churches, has completely neutered the pulpits. That's why they won't take a stand. And these people that are listening out there, and all denominations of people are, are listening right now, and you go to church on Sunday, and you come back, and you say to Alex on the phone, or you say to your friends, you know, why doesn't my preacher take a stand? Why won't he talk about this? Why doesn't he get involved in this? And this is why. This is why. The 501c3 tax-exempt status, by the way, our Liberty Fellowship here in, in Montana, is not a 501c3 
uh, fellowship. By the way, it didn't exist until the 50s. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or the freedom of the press, on and on and on. First Amendment. They said, oh, you can still be a church that's tax exempt outside of law because we can't put a law on you. We have no jurisdiction. Back to what you were talking about earlier. Or you can be a charitable organization. And the big denominations ordered all their churches to file under it. And now the charitable organization has no free speech. When it doesn't get any clearer than the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or the press or the people uh, to peaceably assemble. I mean, it just goes on and on. Read the First Amendment. It's all right there. And now I've had friends come to me from their Baptist churches, their Catholic churches, uh, their, uh, you, know, you name it, I, I, Mormons have sent me the letters, where uh, just across the board, uh, they are told, do not even talk about politics or your views, even at church or at any church function. I mean, they're even telling now their flocks don't have free speech. I mean, these are like Soviet cults. Yeah, the, the fear of losing their tax-exempt status is what's causing that. And Romans chapter 13 and the erroneous interpretation of that passage is giving them the spiritual justification for it. That's, that's the double tandem that is uh, destroying America. If we could get the churches and the preachers to stand up for the biblical principles of liberty, the same kind of principles that Jonas Clark, uh, he was the pastor of the church at Lexington on April 19, 1775, when the British troops came marching through to do two things. They were going to arrest John Adams, uh, excuse me, Sam Adams and John Hancock, and they were going to, to seize the cache of firearms that was stored at Concord. And when they got to Lexington, it was Pastor Jonas Clark and the congregants, the male congregants of his church that were the Minutemen that fired the shot heard around the world, and the war for independence began in the United States. And, it was, it, and that was the kind of spirit that the black regiment preachers all uh, personified back at that time. They all understood this. I mean, if we had this erroneous, fallacious interpretation of Romans 13 in the colonies, like we have today in America, we would still be a crown colony of Great Britain. Well, that's why the social engineers 100 years ago first thing targeted the takeover of the churches and the teaching of Romans 13. I mean, they knew they had to get rid of real Christianity in this country, and they've replaced it with all these gold, little shiny uh, glitter bug uh, people in you know fancy outfits with pink wigs on, acting like clowns on purpose. I mean, that is all de by design, ladies and gentlemen. It was the Christians that kicked King George back to England. We'll be right back with Chuck Baldwin. Your uh, is our guest. Look, humans haven't changed. We, we act the same. And if you lay down to tyranny, it is going to run over you to the point of, in most cases, just starts killing everybody because they're like, well, no one's resisting us. Well, then kill them. I must continue to dominate. It's just it's, it's wicked. Jenny in Florida, you're on the air with Pastor Chuck Baldwin. Go ahead. Thanks for holding. Then Ryan, Earl, Kathy, Chris and others. Go ahead, Jenny. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? Good. Welcome. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for everything that you do or you've done. Thank you. But uh, my feel is everything is go everybody is going to the bad way. Everybody is going to fix a problem that we have today. We have to fix a problem we have in the past first, and it's so much easier. And believe me, we have a very deep secret in the past. Could you follow me? <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. We have a deep secret in the past. Well, we're we're talking about how our churches have been turned into basically government arms. Uh, do you have a question or comment for Chuck Baldwin, or what's the secret? No, a secret. I, you believe or not, it may be so strange, but I decoded Leonardo da Vinci. I decoded a whole thing. Well, listen, send me that information. That's very interesting. Uh, send me that information at showtips at infowars.com. Thank you. I know there's supposedly a lot of stuff encoded in there, and that's a big field out there. Ryan in Texas, you're on there with Chuck Baldwin. we got to move quick. Go ahead, Ryan. All right, I just got a 20-second comment I want to make. Um, 
when you look on the Drudge Report, they say that we're the criminals and terrorists. Well, the real criminals and terrorists are the puppets that are in the office that are voting for these unconstitutional bills. If you voted for the Patriot Act, the Man of War's Renewal, criminal. The Super Congress, criminal. Banks, criminals. And see, if I steal from my company, I get fired. If you steal from the country, and they're retiring. You know, there's cameras on every corner acting like I'm a criminal, while they're live on camera being criminals. I don't want to wait till next November uh, for a change. We need to arrest these criminals now. We know the tireless minority, and I don't want to just impeach the president. We need to impeach all these criminals. They want a super Congress. I want a super impeachment. Very well said. Thank you for the call, uh, Ryan. Uh, that's a good question for you, Chuck. I'm sure you've seen Harry Reid call the Tea Partiers terrorist. Uh, the New York Times says that anybody who does, wants to get rid of the Federal Reserve is, quote, Hezbollah. They're rebranding and saying we're not worried about al-Qaeda now. And I told folks this was coming. It's, it's particularly white males and Christians. Uh, and we've got all these White House memos about how great a terror attack would be uh, to help them. We have Joe Biden saying the Tea Party are terrorists. Uh, it, they're really trial ballooning, coming after people that understand that they are the criminals. Yeah, well, I got a little taste of that in 2008, Alex, whenever the Mayak report came out in the state of Missouri and identified myself and Ron Paul and Bob Barr by name. And of course, you were you were on top of all that. We we you talked you broke the story on that one, and uh, that thing became a, a major debacle, uh, an embarrassment for the law enforcement officials in the state of Missouri that later rescinded the report and dismissed the man that initiated it. But the damage was done, and ever since then, that has been continuing. Eight did that. The Department of Homeland Security, through their fusion centers continues to put out this kind of uh, disinformation. Well, I was about to say, my act was just a regurgitated ADL federal report. That's exactly right, SPLC. And they continue. Uh, these reports continue. I, I promise you, everywhere you go to speak, everywhere I go to speak, uh, and there is a report that appears in the computers of the local and county law enforcement officers alerting them to the fact uh, that we are there identifying us as extremists, et cetera. And I'm, I'm not just saying that by hearsay. I actually saw a police computer report one time when I invited Dr. Greg Dixon to come and speak to my church, a great man of God, the former pastor of Indianapolis Baptist Temple in Indianapolis, Indiana, that was seized by the IRS, the only church in America to, to do so. And uh, whenever he came to speak, uh, Deputy Sheriff let me see the uh, computer in his car, alerting him to Dr. Dixon's presence in my church. Now, that came from DHS through the Fusion Center into the local and county law Oh, yeah, that's who they're watching when they get the Christmas Day underwear bomber. The government admits they got him on the plane, all staged, and we're all the Lockheed hanging out secretly at the Pentagon, Fox News. But I got sent a secret report from the Army that at my events for In the Fed and Ron Paul's, they have Army there. And it says, don't let them know your army. They'll try to kill you. I mean, they're telling the military we, that if you come to an in the Fed rally and they, we find out they're military, we're going to kill them, Pastor, like we're like we're vampires or something. Yeah, that's what it's come to. And again, my Romans 13 book is it Chuck Baldwin. But hold on, stay time. there. Let's play it on the other side, do a few more minutes and take a few more calls. Absolutely, folks. That's why we've got him here today. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you his website on the other uh, side if you want to get it and get it out to your pastor. And if your pastor reads it and still keeps going forward, get out of that shirt. Baldwin to finish uh, plugging the name of his book, where you get it. And again, it's just like we had Sheriff um, Richard Mack in here last week and we're like, go to his website, get his book. I'm not, I'm not being paid to promote it. I, I've got him here because I believe in it. If we go wake up our sheriffs about the Constitution, wake up the pastors about their true role in history, uh, if we go and educate our city councils, our legislatures about the Constitution, what do the globalists do? What do the feds do? What do uh, I mean, I knew about this decades ago, but now I've learned they've more than tripled the number of Federal Reserve paid speakers who will be you know, heads of city governments, uh, corporate leaders. They're paid to go speak to high school classes. They're paid to go speak to colleges. They're paid to go to the Rotary Club. And, and, and they will pay top lawyers, famous people. I mean, they've just got a huge army of them to go be there, to go meet them, to go slickly sell what they're doing. So you're not going to beat the New World Order by yourself. I'm not either. But it, it, it's all of us 
out there waking people up everywhere. I, I call it evangelizing for liberty and freedom. Uh, because believe me, the, the tyrants are out there selling their corruption. Uh, so again, give folks your uh, website and the name of the book uh, so folks can get it, uh, Pastor. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, my son and I, uh, Tim Baldwin, and, and, and he's a constitutional attorney. Of course, I've been a pastor for 35 years. We collaborated on this uh, monumental book. It's called Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission. And it's available on my website and Tim's website. My website is chuckbaldwinlive.com. That's all one word, chuckbaldwinlive.com. L-I-V-E dot com. And there is a, there's a link right there on the front page. You see it mm -hmm. advertised. Just click that. Get it online, credit cards, uh, et cetera, and able to pick this up. And it's, uh, you know, it's just under 200 pages. Uh, it's chucked full of scripture references from both testaments. We have theologians, historians, and Christians from history and their comments uh, on what they said about this subject. And I, I challenge anyone to read this book and then not be convinced that we have a sacred obligation to resist uh, evil authority. You and know, by the Benjamin way, Franklin, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Bridget Franklin said, rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. And he was exactly right. That is a scriptural truism that it is an obligation of Christian people to resist evil government. But, but Pastor, as you know, this is a chicken or egg situation. If you've really got God in your heart, you're not going to be able to control yourself. You're going to be drawn towards confronting bullies and scum. Uh, and I think that's the issue. So I think the book should be gotten out to pastors because maybe they're ignorant and it will certainly wake some up. But also it's a test. If your pastor reads it, and then argues with you about it, because I've read the Bible, I've studied history, this is common sense, it's a no-brainer. But if they read this very well-written, well-researched historical document, and they still don't listen, then you need to find a better church. And, and, and I think your book should be really a litmus test uh, for churches. What do you say to that, uh, Pastor Baldwin? Oh, wow, I think, I think, thank you, Alex. I think that's true. I, don't, I couldn't tell how many people have, have read the book and have, have called us back or written us and said, you know what? This what this confirmed everything that I knew in my heart was true, but I didn't know where to find it in the Bible. I, I didn't know where to, to to see it in print, but now I see it, and you know, and and they have done that very thing. I, now I'm looking for a church that will preach the truth relative to this vitally important subject. And I know people all over America that are doing that. So I, I think that is exactly if we don't start voting with our feet. We Christians, if we don't start voting with our feet and getting out of these churches that are bringing us into bondage spiritually, politically, ethically, in every other way, and start finding true men of God out there, even if the church is a small little church with only 30 or 40 people in it, so what? Be in a church where the truth is being preached, and God will bless your family, and more, and more than that, God will bless our nation. I could not agree more. Yeah, we got to do it. Uh, we've turned away from the basic principles, and now look what we're getting. The Constitution Bill of Rights goes out the door. Corruption and absolute poverty comes in. I mean, I, that's, it's real simple. We got to get the tyranny out of here, but we got to replace it with something. Uh, let's go uh, to uh, who's up next here. Uh, I'll take a few calls, then we're going to let our guests go, and, and then I'll continue with calls. Uh, Earl in Georgia, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Yes, sir. I'm a first-time caller. I've listened to you for a while, and I'm an admirer of Chuck Baldwin. I followed him on the Internet for a while. Um, lost track, though, over the, over the last year. However, uh, I guess this is a question I have uh, directed to Chuck. Um, I know your son's a constitutional lawyer. And the way I read the Constitution, there is a separation of powers, and it says that the Supreme Court is supposed to act upon the legislation that Congress passes. Um, I know they've been out of control as well as every other branch, but is your son being a constitutional lawyer? I am asking, I suppose, with this latest legislation that has been enacted, which strips Congress of its uh, power to uh, introduce financial um, legislation. And if you know. they don't vote for what the super committee gives them, then the super committee can do whatever they want. It is a uh, dictatorship of 13. Uh, it, 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 about, it goes about 90% of the way. I will give you a constitutional answer on that. 
of course the Supreme Court should be causing a fracas over this and pointing out that it's blatantly unconstitutional. But so should the vast majority of House members of both parties that voted for it. They voted away their power. Sorry, you can't vote away our Constitution. Chuck, your comments on that. Yeah, ex exactly right. And, and Tim's very involved in these types of things. And of course, this this one here is, is fraught with unconstitutionality. And, and I would like to think that there's going to be uh, several uh, constitutional attorneys and scholars that are going to come forth and, and fight this. I, I certainly hope so. But but yes, ma'am, this is brazenly unconstitutional. Any other uh, comments? Uh well, I am just asking, as a citizen who uh, called every uh, body that I knew yesterday and also sent emails, called Congressman um, office and told them to vote no, is there anything else, as, as citizens, can we enact a class action suit against them? Well, anything will help, because even if you don't win it, it, it draws attention to it. I'm telling you, resistance is victory. I appreciate uh, your call. Uh, can, can I just say, Alex, here, go to my son's website and contact him, uh, please. His, his, his website is libertydefenseleague.com, all one word, libertydefenseleague.com. And feel free to communicate with him and ask him these questions, and he will respond to yeah, you. Yeah, we've got to get him back on. He's been on before. He's great. Almost better than his uh, pop. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Use he is a Yankee better. term. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk to Kathy in Indiana. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Kathy, you're on. You're up. Batter up, Kathy. Okay, let's move on. Sorry, Kathy. Oh, our phones just went down. That only happens once or twice a year. Oh, our phones just went into cardiac arrest. Okay, great. Even when I try to go to your calls. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Chuck's on a different phone system. Chuck, you can still hear me, can't you? Yeah, I can still hear you, Alex. All right, John, when the phones are back up, let me know, and I'll we'll just take calls from those folks, then get back on and get on air. Um, 800-259-9031. Well, Pastor, I want to thank you for coming on, and I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Thank you, Alex, and thanks for letting me be on the show. Keep up the great work. Are you kidding? Thanks for writing that book. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we want to get it out, and we want people to, to get the message, and we really believe that the, the Christian and the churches uh, is where the, the real power is in this country. Uh, it's always been that way. We, the people, are the are the government, and we are the power in this country. And if you can get the pastors and the Christians to understand their obligation and their duties under God, and I think of that scripture verse where Jesus said, if the salt has lost its savor, it's henceforth good for nothing but to be trodden under the foot of men and cast out. And that's exactly what's happened. The church has lost its saltiness, and it's being cast out and trodden under the foot of tyranny. And Romans 13 and the misinterpretation of it is one of the biggest reasons why this book is a major, major breakthrough, I think, in helping people to have the information scripturally, historically, at their fingertips to know how to, how to deal with that. And again, if they'll go to ChuckBaldwinLive.com, all one word, ChuckBaldwinLive.com, they can order that book. Okay, we look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Take care. Thank you, Alex. All right, there he goes.